All right, you heard from Health and Human Services Secretary Price uh, that he thinks when all is said and done, despite the commotion, that the, the plan that the leadership of the Republican Party put out to uh, repeal and revamp Obamacare will be the one that wins the day. I think my next guest might slightly disagree with that, Kentucky Republican Senator Rand Paul. Senator, he thinks it's that plan, not your plan. What do you say? Well, you know, I think we're pretty united on repeal, but we're pretty divided on replacement. Uh, about a year ago, we voted unanimously to repeal the whole thing, a clean repeal. I still think that's about all that will pass. On replacement, we're very, very divided. The Obamacare light plan that's being put forward by the House leadership continues subsidies, continues Obamacare taxes, has a mandate, and has insurance bailout money in it. So, no, I don't think we're at all on the same page on that. But I think you could put forward repeal separate from replacement, and I think we could get something passed. All right, you mentioned the taxes that continue at least through this year. Uh, Secretary Price was quite insistent that next year they go away. Um, except, for the ca ex except for the Cadillac tax, which right. goes on forever. Okay, so that's a big problem for you. You know, um, the president seems to think he can win you over, Senator. And, uh, we're quoting his tweet. I feel sure that my friend <laughs> Rand Paul will come along with the new and great health care program because he knows Obamacare is a disaster. What do you say? Well, I do agree with the president, and I talked to him this week. I agree that Obamacare is a disaster, and I agree that we should repeal it. And so I think that's where the unity is. And then, you know, we're going to have to have a debate over replacement. But I don't think the conservatives in the House or the conservatives in the Senate want a new entitlement program, continued Cadillac tax. You know, we're not for an insurance mandate. You know, the, the, we complained for six years about the individual mandate and the House, you know, the Obamacare light plan. Instead of paying the mandate or the penalty to the government, you pay it to the insurance company. I, I think that's a distinction without a difference. All right, you're talking about the one that after a couple of months, as you switch over, young people, more to the point, switch over to plan, they get a 30% penalty, right? Yeah, and in fact, it actually might be a disincentive because let's say you've lost your job or you don't have enough money to be on insurance for a while, and you know that when you start it again, you have a 30% penalty, but you also know that you could start it again anytime you get sick. Boy, my goodness, as expensive as insurance is, most young people would say, hmm, 30%, I'm going to have to pay it sometime anyway. Why don't I wait until I get sick to pay that penalty? Yeah, I, that's the problem in the plans as they stand, right? Now, you're, you're a doctor of background, but I, I think young people, and I've raised this so many guests, maybe even last time you were here, they feel indestructible, Senator. They feel that they don't need to do it. And all the incentives in the world, I dare say you could throw 20000 in tax credits at them. I don't know if they'll go along. So well, how do no, you what deal they'd with go that? For, what they would go for is inexpensive insurance. And what you're finding is, I'm not so sure we're going to get inexpensive insurance. To get inexpensive insurance, you need a catastrophic policy. I'm not positive under the House plan you're going to be able to get a catastrophic policy. That really has to be high deductible, low premium policy. Right now, the biggest problems in the individual market, premiums are soaring and people are not participating that are healthy and it's having this adverse selection where you have a lot of sick people and not too many health people. And we have a high people. deductible environment as well. So you have the higher premiums exactly. and the Exactly. Yeah. I'm not so sure that anything in the house plan changes that. My fear is that if you tell people you can buy insurance after you get sick, they will continue to do that. My fear is that under the House plan, Obamacare light, that the situation continues to get worse. In fact, they admit as much because they put $100 billion in there to bail out the insurance companies. So the insurance companies don't have risk. Where We're is going that $100 billion coming from? I saw that as well. Where is this pool of money coming from? Um, that's a really good question, but I'm not really excited about bailing out the insurance companies and assuming their risk, having the taxpayer assume their risk. But the insurance companies are a little bit disingenuous. They come to Washington asking, acting like they're the best patriots in the world and they want to help everybody and they want guaranteed issue, but they want guaranteed issue only if the taxpayer pays for it. So, no, I mean, they're disingenuous in this, but the House plan ends up insuring the insurance companies against loss, and I don't think that's what the federal government ought to be doing. All right. The, the key similarities in both plans as they stand now, and I'd like to be with, with each one of these, whether you agree or, or they should be the same, do you think there should be coverage for pre-existing conditions? I think what ought to happen is we ought to try to have uh, let people join a health care association 
with a lot of people, and that would be a group plan, and then they would get protection against pre-existing conditions. I think if you just simply mandate it in the individual market, and you take away the individual mandate, and you have this insurance mandate, okay. it, won't be, it won't be enough, and I think the insurance companies will continue to spiral down, premiums will right. continue and to I, spiral I'm, up. I'm sorry to gun through this, but what about lifting the lifetime cap on coverage? Do you agree with that? I think that if we get people in group insurance, you have the leverage to get all of the things you desire in the terms of the insurance. All right. Uh, both of the plans presently tax generous employer plans. Would you? No, I think if you can negotiate a good insurance plan, why would we want to punish you? So this comes from this top-down sort of a government knows best. The government doesn't think you should have a really good or expensive plan, yeah. so government's going to tax that. I'm completely against that entire gotcha. notion that government knows best ever. We're hearing the president might be visiting your state, Louisville, more to the point this weekend. Do you know anything about that? Uh, I've heard the rumors, and we welcome him. He's very popular in our state. And he might be pressuring you. <laughs> well, I'm a big supporter of what he's done in deregulating our coal industry. I've been promoting that here for years. We're, we're lucky to have him as president with regard to deregulation. He's for lowering taxes, so am right. I. And uh, we're hoping we find common ground. And I think the common ground on Obamacare is that we're both for repealing it. All right.